Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at putting Linux, and in particular Lubuntu Linux, on this old Dell Inspiron 1300 notebook. So this computer is something that I picked up for free at my town's local recycling center. Um, I went down there one day a few years ago to drop off some of my own broken electronics and this was set off to the side for someone to take and I happened to be the one to take it home. In fact, if you look through some of my older videos, you'll see that I made a couple of videos documenting this and what I needed to do to get it going. I'll put some links down in, this, in the uh, description below, or you could click on the card that'll pop up here in just a second. So the computer has pretty much sat untouched since the last video that I made about it. I really haven't used it at all since then. And in fact, it's still more or less configured the way that the original owner had it. You can see that it's got Windows XP Home Edition version 2002 Service Pack 3 loaded onto it. And you can see that it is a 1.5 gigahertz processor with 500 meg of RAM. So not a real powerhouse, but as you can see, it still works. I hate to uh, let it sit and do nothing. So what I've decided to do is get a copy of a light Linux distribution to throw on here and see if we can breathe some new life into this old girl. So I decided that I'm going to use Lubuntu on my machine. I did a little bit of research on the current Linux di distros that are out there and this seems to be a popular lightweight distro that can be used on older computers like the one that I have. So I came to their main page which is lubuntu.net and then I just went over to the download tab and I grabbed the desktop 32-bit version for my old computer. So then I just clicked on that and of course down here in the bottom I've got the uh, the download starting so once that finishes I'll have an ISO file that I can burn to a DVD. I've already downloaded this image and burned it to a disk but just for those of you that aren't familiar with that process I'll just show it quickly here. So basically once the download finishes you would click the arrow here and go to show in folder. That'll pop up Windows Explorer and then you can find the file that you downloaded in our case it will be Lubuntu-17.10 desktop i386 so I'll right click on that. Now before I do anything else I want to make sure I have a blank DVD in my drive and then I would simply right click on this and choose burn disk image. So after it processes for a minute or so you'll get this pop up here that shows you that this is the image file that's going to be burnt to this disk in this drive and when you're ready to start burning it you just click the burn button you'll see the progress window uh, slowly fill in green as it progresses and then once it's all done this will say finished and the disk should eject itself now like I said before I've already burned my disk image so I'm not going to do that now we'll just head over to the laptop and get started with the installation so I've got my Lubuntu 17.10 disk. I'm going to put that in my drive here. And now normally I'd try and gracefully shut this down, but it kind of takes a long time for it to shut down because it's such an old computer. So I'm going to give this the one finger salute and just kind of hard power it off here. Okay, let's power this back up and then I'm going to get ready to hit F12 so I can get into the boot menu. So I have to be pretty quick with that F12 key. I've only got about a second or so to catch it before the thing goes right into uh, starting up Windows. But anyway, now that I've caught it and got the boot menu, I can scroll down and hit CD, DVD, CD, RW drive. And I can hit enter. And now what the computer is going to do is it's going to boot from the CD-ROM into Lubuntu. So here we're at the Lubuntu kind of pre-boot screen I'll call it and we've got a few options that we can try here. We can try Ubuntu without installing it. In other words we can run it right from the DVD. I tried that a few nights ago and it actually worked okay. It wasn't too bad. You know there's a little bit of latency running off the DVD drive but it's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. But anyway, I've decided I want to install this, so I'm going to skip that. I'm going to go right to install Lubuntu. 
Um, we could do some other things. We could check the disk for defects. We could test the memory or we could boot from a hard drive. There's a few other options that we have down here that we could play with, but I'm going to skip all those and go right into installation. So as you can see, we've come to the language setup page. I'm going to click English and hit continue. So now we're being prompted as to whether or not we want to install third-party software. So I'm going to go ahead and let it do that. I think that'll be fine. And then we're also prompted up here, but it's grayed out, as to whether or not we want to download updates while installing Lubuntu. And I don't know why that option is grayed out, but we can't change it even if we want to. So let's continue. So now we're up at the next page and we're being prompted for some information about the installation type. As you can see, we can erase the disk and install Lubuntu on the computer, completely overwriting the existing operating system. I think that's the option that I'm going to choose. But we have a few other options we can play with here. We can do uh, an encrypted installation and we can also go in and use LVM or Logical Volume Manager to kind of manage our partitions. This may allow us to do a dual boot setup or something along those lines as well. Or we could go down here and do a completely custom installation. Now for the purposes of just trying this out, I don't think I'm going to fool around with any of that stuff right now. I'm just going to go with whatever the defaults are and just get it installed on this computer and let it overwrite that old Windows installation that's already on here. So we've got a pop-up that's come up here now and it's just giving us a last chance here to sort of back out of this installation and prevent wiping out the hard drive of this machine. But I'm fully invested, I'm ready to wipe it out, so let's click that button. So next up we can choose our time zone and I happen to be in Connecticut so I'm in the, the New York time zone. I'd much rather that say Boston but either way we'll hit continue and uh, go to the next step. So now we're going to choose our keyboard layout which is going to be English US on both sides and we'll continue that. So now we can put in a little information about ourselves here so so my other option here is I can choose to log in automatically or require the password each time I log in. This computer is never going to leave the house here, so I'm not real worried about that. I'm just going to let it log in automatically, and I will continue on. So now we're at the screen where it says it's copying files. I expect this is the part that will take a little while, so uh, we'll just kind of sit back, relax, and let it do its thing. So as you can see, the installation is complete now. It's been about maybe about a half hour or so. This didn't take quite as long as I thought it would. But anyway, the battery on my camera is just about dead, and it's getting late. i got to go to work tomorrow. So I'll pick this back up tomorrow, and we'll finish going through the setup. So we're all booted up now, and we're getting a warning about an incomplete language support here. Now it says we can try and fix the problem now, or we can do it later and I, I can't imagine what the problem would be so I'm gonna just leave this for now and work on setting some of the other stuff up anyway. So as you can see everything is up and running. We've got the Lubuntu desktop here and it's a pretty basic by today's standards interface I guess you could say. Um, it's very much kinda like an early Windows 95 or Windows XP type setup where you kind of have what I'll call a start menu or maybe an applications menu and you've got a handful of things that are pre-installed so for instance we've got a bunch of accessories here kind of the standard fare calculator disk management things like that and then here we've got like a PDF reader uh, basic paint program things like that we have the Firefox web browser and a few other things here for internet stuff We've got a couple of office apps, a word processor, and I assume that's a spreadsheet of some sort. We've got some items here to listen to sound and play video and that kind of thing. 
So now we've got some things here under system tools that we can use to manage the operating system. We've got the terminal, uh, software updater, things of that nature. And then under preferences we've got all of our options to customize how things look, monitor settings, things like that. Screen saver. And then here we've got the run command where we could bring up just a dialog box that'll let us type in command line prompts without actually opening the terminal window. Okay, and then down here we have our taskbar just like a Windows computer would have. But the difference being that over here on the right we have these workspaces. And if you're not familiar with Linux or Unix, what these are is basically just four different workspaces. And when you click on one, it looks like everything disappears and you have a clean desktop. But if you go back to the first one, your programs are still there. So this is useful if you're you know, working on one set of tasks and you're kind of done with those tasks, but you don't want to close the applications. You want to kind of keep everything open. You can just go to a clean desktop and start doing something else. It's almost like having a second computer. I really wish Windows would incorporate this desktop theme natively. Um, you can kind of achieve this by downloading other apps, but it would be nice to, to have that in Windows. So then over here we've got our battery manager and our network status and our volume control and our time and date settings. So one thing you may notice, it may just be out of the shot here, but I ended up connecting this to my network with a wire because I couldn't get the uh, wireless settings to work with this. I, I think I need to download some drivers and things like that, but I played around for a little while and couldn't get it working. So that'll be a subject for a video another time, is getting the, the wireless working on here. But for right now, I've got it wired and that was as simple as just plugging the wire and it recognized everything automatically and and I'm connected to my network and the internet for that matter. So that's really it for installing the operating system and doing the basic setup. And overall it seems like it's working quite well. I mean you can kind of see everything is responding pretty well when I try and open up programs and things like that. So I think this was a good move for this computer. The Windows 95 installation that was on here was getting really slow. It was really bogged down with a bunch of junk that was on here that the previous owner put on. So rather than reinstall a fresh copy of Windows 95, I wanted to go the Linux route on this as I have some experience working with Linux, especially on older hardware. And from that experience I know that it just works better than Windows when you start dealing with this older hardware, especially when you get a, a light sort of distribution of Linux like this is. Um, it can just really bring an old computer to life and make it usable again. So I think I'll end the video here. I'll probably make a few more videos as I do a little bit more with this computer. My plan right now is to try and use this for uh, running my SDR Play software defined radio and maybe controlling my other ham radios that I have, my Elecraft K3 and my ICOM 746. So stay tuned and we'll see what happens. But for now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. Thanks for watching.